Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. We would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us on Patreon, please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava and today we are completing our discussion of simple concepts from statistics and econometrics, that is, different versions of t-tests that can be extremely useful in assessing whether two means of two different samples are significantly different from each other, whether there is some notable difference between the means of two samples. And in the past two videos we have already covered the equal variance t-test, perhaps the simplest of them all, and the unequal variance t-test that tackles the assumption of variance equality imposed by the first test. But Neither of the two deal with potential dependence between two samples. What to do if the realizations of a particular random variable, in that case we investigated the example of economic growth rates in the US, the UK and China, and tried to figure out whether economic growth in UK or China is significantly different than economic growth in the US. So what to do if you think that the data can be dependent? What happens if you think that the economic growth rates in one country might influence economic growth rates in other country, or that both are influenced by some global dynamics that no country can avoid in its economic development? Well, we'll consider what to do just today when we investigate the pad sample t-test. Pad sample t-test is very useful when you are dealing with time series and you want to figure out whether the mean of a particular time series is equal to the mean of another. And why is it most importantly used in time series? Well, because in time series it's really easy to pair observations together, because there is a natural way of doing it. For example, there is a year that corresponds to several economic growth figures across a number of countries. Here we have economic growth rates from 1971 until 2019, for the US and the UK both, and since 1980 for China. So for 1971 until the very end of our sample, we can calculate the differences between the economic growth rate in the UK and in the US, and track this difference all the way until the end of our sample. For China and the US, we can calculate these differences starting from 1980. And these differences will be crucial in estimating whether they are statistically significant. Because, as we have paired the observations sample by sample, we have arguably avoided any dependencies that were there because we have subtracted economic growth rates in the US from uh, the respective economic growth in a particular country for each of the years when it's available. And obviously the paired sample t-test can also be applied in cross-sectional data when there is an obvious matching between observations. But in case of time series, it's perhaps the easiest to explain it and to understand it. So without further ado, we can first of all calculate the sample size throughout our data. So for US it's 49, for UK it's again 49, for China it's 40 because the data is missing and it starts from 1980, and for the two paired samples, for the samples of differences between UK and the US and the US and China, we have 49 and 40 respectively, because we had to avoid some observations here. We have no reliable data for that period, at least for that trial question. So now we can calculate the means of each of our um, samples, applying the simple average function through all these arrays. And we are mostly concerned here with the average differences presented over here. And those would be key to investigating our paired sample t-test outcome. And we can see here first that the difference between the US economic growth and the UK economic growth is very low. The UK is growing a little bit faster, but only by that much, 0.04% per annum. And we can already kind of feel that it's not enough to be statistically significant. For China, though, the difference is a whopping 6.78%, so maybe, just maybe, it can be statistically significant. But to know for sure, we have to apply the formal testing first. To do that, we have to account for the random variability of our data, because some of these differences can occur just due to random chance. 
when you toss 100 coins and 51 of them land heads, it doesn't mean that the coins are not fair. Maybe it was just randomness that skewed the result. So to account for that, we need to calculate the standard deviations, sample standard deviations, that is, because we're not dealing with populations here, for all five of the arrays. And the two most important standard deviations are those standard deviations of differences, because these could be applied in a test that is robust to sample dependence. And here we can calculate the test-specific uh, standard deviation by just dividing the standard deviation we have obtained by the square root of the number of pairs we've got. So here we divide this standard deviation by the square root of 49, and this we divide by the square root of 40, and we can do it just by dragging the formula around. Now we can immediately calculate t stats by just dividing the differences we got, so average differences in these paired samples, divided by the test-specific standard deviation, and we still get a very low t-stat in case of the pair of UK and US, albeit it's slightly higher than the one we have obtained from the equal variance t-test. Uh, if we compare it, we can see this is 0 0.09 and this is 0 0.18, of almost 0 0.19. So it means that sometimes when the equal variance t-test or unequal variance t-test doesn't give you a high enough t-stat, the situation can change when you account for potential dependencies between the samples. And for China, the t-stat is already very high at 14.87, which means that most likely the effect is going to be statistically significant. Again, rule of thumb, magnitude is higher than 2, the result is statistically significant probably. But to be absolutely sure, we have to calculate the number of the degrees of freedom, and here it's all very um, simple, it's just the number of pairs minus 1, and minus 1 is just due to the fact that we have uh, applied the uh, degrees of freedom reduction by enforcing the min onto the uh, samples, so it's 48 in case of the uh, UK-US pair, and 39 in case of China-US pair, and now we need to calculate the p-values using two-tailed t-distribution t.dist.2t for two tails. And as an argument, we put the absolute value of our t stat we have just calculated and the number of the degrees of freedom. Again, the number of pairs in the paired sample minus one. We close the parentheses and enforce the formula and get 85.40% for the pair of UK and US and almost 0% for US and China, meaning that the difference uh, of economic growth rates in uh, UK and US pair, uh, even in the paired sample, is largely attributable to random chance alone. The probability of such uh, occurrence uh, because of randomness is higher than 85%. It's much higher than 10%, the most commonly used and the least stringent confidence interval. And here it's much lower than 10%, it's even lower than 5%, it's even lower than 1%. So in any hypothesis testing framework, such a p-value would signal statistical significance. We can even uh, enlarge a number of decimal places and see how far down the line first meaningful digits occur. So definitely, even the paired sample t-test shows us that the economic growth rates in the US and the UK are very similar, but in the US and China they are very different, with the Chinese economic growth rate being remarkably higher at least over the past 40 years. And that's all there is for paired sample t-test and how to tackle potential sample dependence in time series hypothesis testing. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I am eager to see any suggestions for further videos you would like me to make. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.